On today's show, we're gonna be looking at color filters and see how they can affect your black and white photography. Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live three times a week show here on YouTube all about photography, video, live streaming, all that kind of goodness. It's right here at 9.30 a.m. Pacific Time, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at youtube.com slash photojoseph. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Today we're talking about black and white photography using color filters. And you might think at first, well, hold on a second, I heard about that. That's something that those film guys use. You don't need to do that. It's all digital now and you can just do it in the Lightroom and get the same effect. Well, you can get a similar effect, but is it the same? Eh, probably not. Because when you're changing the actual light that's coming into the sensor, things are recorded in a different way than if you just record your standard color picture and then go and tweak it. Now, let's, let's be honest. Would most people be able to tell the difference? Yeah, probably not. But hey, you're watching this show, you love photography, you're a purist, and you want to have some fun with your photography and experiment in different ways and see what you can do. And so that's what we're gonna be doing. So I'm gonna, I've got a few things to show you. We're gonna talk about the filters themselves and how to adapt those filters to your lens, whatever size it may be. I'm gonna show you a website that's a really, really good resource for black and white photography with color filters that I want you to definitely check out. Click on their link, we've included the link down below. You can check them out. Um, and I'm gonna show you some pictures that I shot outdoors yesterday and then I'm gonna go stand in front of the camera over there and put different color lenses, uh, different color filters on so you can see the effect that it has on skin tone. Some will be pleasing, some will be terrifying. You don't wanna mix them up. So let's, uh, let's start off with the basics. We start off with five color filters and you can use any color filter you want, frankly, uh, but there's five that are usually associated with black and white color filter photography. In no particular order, actually in the order that they're in my bag here, you've got green, You've got orange, you've got yellow. I'm gonna try not to put my fingers all over these, but I can tell I've already messed that up. You've got red and you've got blue. Now this particular pack, which was really inexpensive, I, I, I believe this was under $30. I always forget to check these things, but we'll put that link down below as well. Um, it actually comes with those as well as a gray filter and a whole other pack, which I've tossed somewhere else that's got a variety of orange. They're kind of CTO filters, but not really. It's, I don't know what the, anyway, doesn't matter. They're really inexpensive. The company that makes this is called KNF Concept. Here, let's take a close look at this guy here. Um, so this is a little filter pack. You get this nice little thing like so. I've talked about KNF Concept stuff before, and you can see in here, if I, I got this paper, so you can really see the color of the filters in there. So these are the filters that it comes with. Like, we don't need to look at all of them. And it's a great little pack. Off you go. Now, when you buy this, you have to choose a filter size. So what size do you get? And you might be thinking, well, I've got three different size filter sizes on my variety of lenses. Do I have to buy three different sets? No, you don't. Really cool thing. It's easy to forget this, but it's one of those like, oh yeah, duh, I totally knew that. Buy the biggest one that you would need. Maybe even buy bigger just because, hey, why not? Maybe you'll get another lens one day that might be even bigger. And then use step-down filters to make it fit what you've got. So I bought these at 67, yeah, 67 millimeter. The lens that I'm gonna use it on today is the Lumix, uh, the Panasonic 12 to 35 f2.8, which has a, let's see here, I forgot. It, it has a 58, 58 millimeter filter on it filter thread. So I will take this and a couple of these and stop them down. So let me show you how these things work. Let's see, I've got a little, let's get a little close up on these guys. So these are step down filters that you can see from the descriptions on there, like that one on the top there goes, let's try and get the glare off of it. Oh, oops, that's not the one I wanted to put down. Let's try and get the glare off of that there. 55 to 58. So that'll take a 55 uh, millimeter lens and allow you to put a 58 millimeter filter on it. And of course we're talking the screw size, not the focal length. And you can stack these together. So what I've got here, find the right one, this one here will take me from the filter size of 77 millimeter all the way down to 67. But that's not the one that I want for today. The one I want for today is right here. That's one I'll actually use. This one will take me from a, get the glare off of it. Come on, there we go. A 67 millimeter filter, allow me to put it on a 58 millimeter lens. And you can combine these together in as many levels as you want. Um, I've actually did, it's kind of funny, I took the entire stack and put that on a really small lens with a huge filter. It's great, so you can do that. So that's what we're gonna do today, is I'm going to use that little combination. And we'll put links to all these things down below, um, or just head over to kit.com slash photojoseph, and we'll have on there as seen on today's show. But the idea is we take that, take these, put them together, and now you can put any size filter on any 
lens that you've got. Um, by the way, if you are watching live, don't forget that you can ask questions in the chat room. This is one of the great benefits of watching live. And if I bring up the chat room, you'll see right here, there are some questions. There is one. If you put the at photo Joseph in front of it, then I can see it. And I know there's a question. Bart has said, I actually put step up rings directly onto my lenses and buy new lens caps to fit. Oh, clever. This way I know any lens I grab automatically has the same front filter thread. Aren't you clever? Very, very good way to do it. If you're doing a, yeah, if you're gonna be putting filters on and off constantly, that's a perfectly great way to do things. If you're just doing it occasionally, then maybe you don't need to go quite that far, but that is a, a great option. Thank you for sharing that part, very cool. Okay, so now, what do the filters actually do? Well, on a purely technical, scientific level, I need like a bow tie for this part of it. A color filter allows that color through and blocks the other colors, not completely but it blocks those other colors to some degree. Okay, so if I put this, and it, this makes sense if you think about it, if you look through this filter right now, everything looks orange because it's letting the orange light through and blocking the other lights, right? That's logical, it makes sense. We're not talking colors, we're talking black and white photography. Well, as you know, of course, in black and white photography, every color gets reduced to a shade of gray. And sometimes in black and white photography, some similar, actually not even similar, but some colors that are totally standoffish, totally, uh, not opposites, but you know, they very much contrast each other in the color world. When you go to black and white, their shades of gray, their values get so close that they can tend to blend together a little bit. And so you want to take some colors and make them brighter or darker, in the case of grayscale, making them brighter or darker gray, you know, closer to white or closer to black. And so you can then separate them out, separate one color out from another that might otherwise blend together. So an orange filter will let orange light through block other light. So anything orange in your scene is going to get brighter, closer to white. Anything not orange is gonna get closer to black. So let's see, if you think about a red filter. So red filter is a really good one for sky photography, any kind of landscape stuff where you're gonna see the sky because blue is gonna go almost black. Your white clouds still come through as white. They actually can get a little bit brighter white and your, your sky goes really, really dark. And so you can end up with a really cool high contrast view of the world, beautiful. If you, let's see here, if you start with, let's do this in some semblance of order. Uh, all right, so we start with red as a starting point. Yellow is a very neutral one. It's the most calm, most uh, least affecting of the image that you, can, that you would use. Uh, quite good for skin tone. It'll soften, smooth out skin tone, but it might not be enough. And so then you've got your orange, which sits in between the two. And yellow and orange are typically ones that are gonna look best on skin, and we're gonna try that. And then I'll put the blue one on, and it's going to look awful on skin, but we'll see what that does. Blue's pretty dramatic. You don't, blue doesn't get used that much. But, uh, but that's the basic idea. Now, let me, let's take a look at the computer here real quick. I've got a, there it is. I've got this webpage. This is the one that I told you about. It's um, the, let's go to the top of this thing. It is, the article's called Using Colored Filters in Black and White Photography. The website is Photography Mad. And he's got on here a great little chart that shows, here's the colors down the left. Let's make this a little bit bigger here. The colors down the left here, red, reddish, you know, towards yellow, towards orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. And then across the top, what color filter you put on. And then of course, inside of that, the results. So if you have no filter, you can see your red goes to a darkish like this, and the orange goes like that, and yellow goes like that, and so on. You put a red filter on, and your reds, and even the oranges, go really, really bright. So those go towards white your greens and blues go towards black. If you put an orange filter on, you can see that your yellows get up towards white, your oranges get brighter, uh, your greens and blues get darker, but not as much as they do with the red. And then the yellow, again, is continuing that trend. So your greens and blues are a little bit lighter than they were before, your reds and yellows are a little bit darker, or, or sorry, reds are a little bit darker, and your oranges and yellows are considerably brighter. Green takes your reds and throws them to black. Blue takes your reds, yellows, and oranges and throws all those towards black. So really big change. So again, the blue is gonna be a huge change on here and, um, and versus the other ones, but red is gonna be one of the most dramatic for shooting skies. So that's the basic idea there. Pretty straightforward. It can be hard to remember that. If you, you had like a color printer, you could print out something like this and keep it in your bag just so you have that visual uh, memory there until you get really, really used to it. So. Now, now let's talk about the idea of shooting this digitally because of course that's what we're all shooting today. We're shooting digital, well, most of us. When you shoot digital, if you put your camera in JPEG only mode, then you're gonna get a black and white photo out of your camera. And if you put these color filters in front of the lenses, you're gonna see the effect of that immediately. When you take the picture, you're looking on the back of your screen, you're gonna see the effect immediately. 
If you're shooting mirrorless, by the way, this is a, yet again one of those awesome reasons to shoot mirrorless. If you're shooting mirrorless and you put the camera in black and white mode, you'll actually see through the viewfinder the image in black and white. You'll see the effect of that filter in real time. So you can look through the filter and go pop, 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 there's the one that I want. Phenomenal, right? That is really, really cool that you can do. You can even, I don't know about other cameras, but on the Lumix cameras, you can set the viewfinder to always be black and white even if you're shooting color. Kind of an interesting approach. But generally, you put the camera into black and white mode and then you see it in black and white and you put the color filter in front of it. Now, as I said, if you're shooting JPEG, that's what you get is just the black and white file. If you shoot RAW though, as you should, if you shoot RAW, then you're going to see black and white through the viewfinder. When you hit play on the back of the camera, you're gonna see that black and white picture. But once you load that picture up into Lightroom or Photoshop, whatever you're using, suddenly it's gonna be color. And it's gonna be color with a big, heavy red cast, orange cast, blue cast, whatever on top of it. Like, whoa, what just happened to my picture? Well, obviously it's got the color filter on there. So now you're gonna go into Lightroom, Photoshop, whatever, and do your black and white conversion. And you're gonna be converting different values than you would have had you started with the baseline. Now, I'm gonna show you these pictures. In fact, let's just, let me get this fired up here. Let's pull up Lightroom and let's just take a look at it. So here's Lightroom, let's start with this picture. I took two, two setups, two series of photos in here. This is the original. Now let me actually, let's uh, hit the right, nope, oh, wrong button there. There we go, there's the original. So that's just standard, no filter. You can see it's kind of a hazy day. There's a little bit of blue in the sky, but not a whole lot. And then I shot that same picture in with the blue filter with the uh, green filter, with the, let's see if I'm getting the right ones. That's, I guess, oh, that's the green, sorry. Oh yeah, up here on the top left, I wrote it down even. Look, that's the green filter, the one before. There's the yellow filter, so there was green. There was the orange filter, and there was the red filter. And then I shot another picture, just a bit of a different shot. There's your normal one, followed by shot through blue, shot through yellow, shot through green, shot through orange, and shot through red. So if you go into Lightroom and you click the black and white button, it does an automatic black and white conversion. It looks at the file and determines the, how best to do it. So when I first started playing with these, I just went through each one of them, clicked the black and white button, but then I realized that in Lightroom, you have all these black and white, you have all these sliders, red, green, blue, et cetera, sliders that get adjusted a different amount. So it's trying to enhance the photo as best as the algorithm thinks it should be but it was treating each one of those photos differently because of course one had this big red cast to it, one had this big orange cast to it. So I scratched that, threw it away, went back to the beginning, did an auto enhance for the unaltered picture, and then I copy and pasted that enhancement to all the other pictures. So we can truly see the difference of the black and white filter, the glass filter on these different images. So that's what we've got. I see Ricardo and Achita in the, in the chat room saying awesome topic, smiley faces. Thank you very much, glad you're enjoying it. Okay, so now let's go back to this and let's take a look at the black and white conversions. So here's our native photo. Again, that's the native one in black and white. Go to this next one and there's blue. Now the blue, as I said, is, is probably one of the least likely ones to get used. You can see the, the whole foreground area has gone really, really, really dark in there. The sky is just as flat as it was before and it just doesn't, it's not really doing anything for us. Okay, let's go to yellow next. Uh, you know, uh, yellow might be a little bit better. Uh, green, oh, now we're starting to see something interesting. We're starting to see a little bit more in the clouds up here. And we go to orange and we're really starting to see some of the clouds come through. Now this is getting quite dark in here. We'll come back to that in a moment. Right now let's look at the clouds. And then finally up to red, where we're getting probably the most dramatic, I'd say the red is the most dramatic on the cloud. So again, there's your original photo. And if you just look at the clouds here, I mean, this is one of the cool things. Just look at the clouds in this sense versus here. Go back to the color one, right? The clouds are, I mean, it's gone, right? The sky changed a little bit, but not that much. But here you can see the clouds so much more in black and white and in color. Now, uh, Bart is pointing something out that actually I think uh, is worth mentioning right now. He says, have you ever tried to white balance with one of the filters on and then take the filter off and see what the photos look like? Interesting, I have not. Is it cool or is that just a question like you've never tried it? I don't know, I've never tried that. But here's one of the things that I, I neglected to change. And in retrospect, I think the, the result would be even more pronounced. I did not set the camera to manual white balance. And I totally should have because the white balance shifted as I put the color filters on there. So I think that if the camera was in manual white balance, we would have an even more pronounced difference between them. So remember that. Put your camera into manual white balance. Auto exposure is great because these filters are obviously blocking light. So if you, if you got a perfectly set up exposure without a filter, you put a filter on, the image is gonna get a lot darker. So that's no good. So you're gonna have to 
adjust the exposure to compensate for that. So if you're shooting in some, some level of auto or semi-auto exposure, you're gonna be just fine. But lock in your white balance if you wanna do a big comparison to really see the difference. I didn't do that, I totally should have done that. Of course, I can go in here now and change the white balance because, hey, I shot raw. So you know what, I haven't even done this yet. Let's do this real quick. I'm getting kind of getting a, away from what I, where I was gonna go, but I think this is a good idea. So this picture, there's our native one, uh, white balance as shot. Let's see if I just set it to, oh, just 5,900 and plus nine. So let's go to this one here, 5,950 plus nine, close enough. Go to this one here, let's change that, 5,900. Eh, it's not really making much of a difference. You can see if I adjust the white balance, it's gonna make a subtle difference in there. But it's interesting. If you're gonna true, do a true comparison, I think you really do want to have your white balances all about the same. Okay, so, so that's kind of interesting. So you got the white balance effect on there. Again, something I hadn't planned on talking about, but, uh, but Bart's comment reminded me of that. That is something worth mentioning in there. But as you saw here, we've got a lot of darkness happening in the shadows in here. So let's now, let's go back to the first one. And actually, no, let's not even go back. Let's just go through each one here and enhance the shadow and highlight contrast, the shadow and highlight settings of those. We don't need to do all of them. Let's just go to the last couple ones, the ones that are most dramatic. Let's do the red. Let's take the red, and now I'm gonna lift the shadows up on the red on there, and maybe even bring the highlights down a little bit. And now we're starting to get into something that's quite a bit more interesting in there. We're seeing a lot. Now, I, admittedly, this is not the best scene in the world. Unfortunately, it's, you know, it's the middle of winter. Not that you'd know it looking outside, but it is the middle of winter. We don't have any fall colors, so the green trees are just greenish, grayish, blah. So this isn't the best time of year to do this sort of thing, but you know, you, you work with what you got. Uh, let's go back to the comments real quick here. Bart says, I recall seeing a video about the white balance trick a long time ago. I think they put a gel in front of the lens and then the white balance and then move the gel to get the flash. Move the gel to the flash and shot. Oh, well, that's a really good topic. I should totally do a show on that. That is, that is a neat trick to do. Okay, mm, mm, good, I'm gonna do that. I'll do that in a future show. Marvin says, wouldn't using a post-process which allows you to select areas of the photo be better? Okay, so great point, Marvin, and this is why I, I mentioned it in the beginning. You could, do, you could do this digitally, and you could probably get, for most people, the same type of result. Part of this is just a purism thing. Let's just have some fun with the purity of it. But let's remember that the data being recorded by the sensor is going to be different. Right, yes, you can isolate the blues and change the contrast, change the darkness of the blues, but you are, at some point, you're saying, well, this pixel is somewhere between here and here, so it gets darkened a little bit less. When it came into the camera, it was recorded that way natively. I think, in general, if you can do things optically, you're going to get a better result. Your mileage may vary, by all means. I think that it's one of those things that's worth playing with. They're cheap enough. If you're into black and white photography, it's totally worth playing with, and you might find that it's not worth the effort, but you know what? You might find that it changes your total world. Um, yeah, you never know. Got to give it a try. You got to give it a try and see what happens. Okay, so let's go back to this. So there's those photos. So there, that one, again, this is with the red filter. You can see up here on the left, it says red. The sky is looking really dramatic, and, um, and we've brought up the shadows in the foreground. Let's just look at the next series of photos, and then we're going to go and, uh, and put one of these things on my face and see what happens there. So again, there's normal, blue, yellow. So even yellow here is looking pretty good green, orange, look at how much the sky is, how much more dramatic the sky looks now, and then red, and now we're really tracking. Now, unfortunately, the sun was setting, so the first photo here, there's a little bit of light on the building, the last one there barely is, but ignoring that, the last one it barely is, but ignoring that, um, if we look at this, and now we take our, let's see, I think I'll take the shadows up just a little bit on here, and uh, maybe maybe add a little clarity to this, and let's just, let's, let's, like, let's do this, let's really goose the contrast on there. Really make that look pretty cool on there. Yeah, look at that. Now we're getting somewhere. So now I might want to go in and, I don't know, add a spotlight on that. Probably just shot at a different time of day to actually get some light on the building. But we're getting somewhere, right? This is really, really cool compared to the original of uh, with, uh, with the red filter and then the original photo on its own. Just a really fun, cool things that you can do in here. And I think it's a lot, it's just one of those fun things to play with, fun things to experiment with. And, you know, you never know what you're going to get. Well, you do, but yeah, you might learn something, you might enjoy it. Um, Achita says, check out Ansel Adams' monolith, the face of Half Dome. It's one of the best black and white with a red filter ever. Very, very good photo. Absolutely. Okay, so now let's take a look at what this looks like on the face. So let me see here. I think we're all set up. Let me unplug myself here and head over to that shot. All right, grab my filters. And here we go. 
Hello, everybody. Probably should grab the color filters themselves. That would be a very clever idea because I'm smart like that. All right. So let's see, I need to put, which camera? There we go. I need to put this guy on. So, so if we could switch over to, to this filter now, this camera now. Let's make sure that's focused on me. I'm going to take this ring and put this guy on there to start. So this is just the adapter ring. Should hopefully get that on and leave that on. And I'm not going to, I'll tighten this guy. I'm not going to tighten the other filters down once I put it on. There we go. And let's start with what should be good. Let's start with orange. So we're looking at that. So there's me. I'm looking good there. Excellent. And let's put orange on there. What do you guys think? You tell me in the comments. Is it, is it making a nice difference? Is it worth doing? I'm looking at a confidence monitor here. Seems to be smoothing things out. I think it looks pretty good. I think that looks pretty cool. Okay, so you got that. And then let's do, let's do this. Now this is the, this is yellow. So what do you think? Did those work? Are they worth it? Are they worth it? And a very good point here as well is to remember that if you're shooting, if you're shooting video, then you can do, you can put these color filters on your camera and shoot black and white video and get some really cool results. Oh, that could be fun too. All right, let's try, let's try some filters that are probably not going to look good. So this is blue. This is definitely not going to be pretty. Okay, so here we go, blue. What does that do? The camera's on auto exposure, auto ISO, so that it can automatically adjust for the brightness on there. That's the flicker that you might be seeing as it compensates. So there's blue, and let's try green. There's the green filter. I can't wait to see the comments and see what you guys think, because I can't really see it from here that clearly to see the difference. So there's green, and then red. <laughs> Man, these things are dirty. All right, red. There's the red filter. I know the hand in the way is probably not a pleasant part of the shot, but there's the red. So. There you go. I don't know. What do you guys think? Is that, is that kind of cool? Is that kind of fun? I'm going to leave that here. Uh, yeah, let's go back up here. So there's the differences for that. That is looking at a face through those color filters. I can't wait to see what you guys think. So let's see here. In the comments, what you guys are saying here. Ricardo says, with orange, it seems to lower the contrast. Uh, Marvin says, neat. It really seems to bring out the contrast to your face. Uh, Bart says, not seeing a ton of difference until red. <laughs> Marvin says, red, yuck. Red was weird. Awesome. I can't wait. Now i got to go back and look at the video later and see what it looked like. Uh, Ryan says, it looks like the warmer, shorter wave, the color, the smoother it makes the image. Interesting way to look at it. So there you go. It's, it's kind of fun, right? Oh, and the other yeah, shirt too, right? I wore this blue checkered shirt, so that should have been quite a bit of a difference in there as well. Uh, yeah, in case you guys are wondering also as well, just in case you missed that show, that thing that I was standing in front of there, that's the eye lighter. Um, I'm pointing it out again because the because it's awesome. I love it. I did a show on it last week or week before. We'll link to that up here. And um, I love it. I think it's awesome. And I didn't want to send it back. And my friends at Westcott called me up and said, keep it. Just keep on showing it. Yes. So there we go. Showing it again. It's a beautiful product. OK. So that's that. So now we've seen what we can do. Now let's have a contest. I think we should have a contest. So here's what we're going to do. Here's, here's, how, here's the plan. This is going to be a photography contest. It's going to be a like a likes for wins photography contest. We'll spread this. We'll give this a couple of weeks because I want you guys to take the time to go out and get some color filters, whether you borrow them or buy some cheap ones or whatever, um, and do some black and white photography like this. Find a scene that just looks awesome with the filter on it. That has a really big difference with the filter, without the filter, and treat it. Make it your best. Do a side by side. I want you to create a single image to submit that is a two panel side by side. It can be a two panel like this, like this, I don't care. That shows the original as a black and white without the color filter, and then the same photo, the black and white photo with the color filter. So you gotta actually shoot it with a color filter. And this is gonna be on the honor system. I'm gonna trust you guys to go out and actually do, put glass filters on there, not just tweak it in Photoshop. Okay, so let's honor system this one. I don't have any way to prove that, to verify it. So honor system this thing, um, but the actually, we couldn't have, forget it. Just total honor system, just do it that way. And you're going to upload them to the Facebook group. So facebook.com slash photojoseph. There will be a, a group on there that is for, or a collection or album, album, that's the word. There'll be an album on there that's for this contest. So you can upload your photo to that album. 
and then people can start voting on it. And you can share it far and wide, say, hey, friends, vote for my picture on here, that's cool. Get them to come in there and vote, and we'll give it a couple of weeks for people to get the filters and find a good scene and tweak their photo and get it up there. Um, but that's what we're gonna do. And then the winner of that, by whatever date, you know, we'll call it two, three weeks from now, I don't know, we'll pick that at some point, is gonna get this fabulous little bag. Hey, so this bag, um, this company called Streetomatic sent two of these to me. One for me to give away to you guys and one for me to play with. I haven't, you can tell, I haven't even opened it, broken it out yet. But this is a cool little camera bag. They call it the fastest camera bag in the world. The whole idea there apparently is that you can get your camera out very, very quickly. Haven't used it yet. It looks beautiful. I, I picked this kind of nice leather looking one. It's, it, well, it is leather. Um, brown leather with the gray. I think it's a beautiful looking bag. So that is going to be the prize for this contest. Excellent. So I have one that I'll do a review on it, a whole close look at that thing uh, in an upcoming show. But this one is going to get given away to whoever wins the contest. So I will put links down below for more clear instructions on this. Uh, but again, it's going to be facebook.com slash photojoseph. You'll find an album there to submit to. And that's how this is going to go. All right, anything else in the comments here before we wrap this thing up? Um, Ricardo says, with the blue, I like that it makes more contrast. Red is smoothing all the things up. Interesting. Red had an alien look, Just says. Oh, I can't wait to look at these more closely. S. Rose says, it's like having your eyes tested. Different prescriptions being put in front of your eyes to see if there's an improvement between diopters, right? Totally. Uh, Ricardo says, so you would shoot the filters directly in black and white? Why not? I would still shoot in RAW. I'd shoot RAW plus JPEG. So you get your JPEGs as a kind of a reference point of what it's supposed to look like, perhaps. But I would start with that RAW image for my final manipulation that's got that heavy color cast to it and adjust from there. That's how I would do it. Uh, Ricardo saying, is it not better to shoot in color than do black and white in post? So yes, you are still shooting in color. Remember when we were looking at the pictures here, we're looking at color versions. These are the, the original photos. These are the raw photos that were shot with the color filter over it and then converted into black and white. So yes, absolutely, that is a better way to do it. But again, I would shoot both. I'd shoot raw plus JPEG. But you have that raw file with that color filter on it and then adjust it. And you know what? Take some, if you're really into this, Take some time to take, you take two photos side by side. Let's, decide, let's say you decide that the red filter is the one for this shot. So you take a picture without any filter, and then you put the red filter on and shift, shoot the exact same picture. And then take those into Lightroom, Photoshop, whatever, and start enhancing them. And can you do something with the image that was shot through the red filter that you can't with a filter, with a shot that was shot without a filter? That'd be an interesting test. Try that out, see what you guys think. I wanna know, uh, you, you do those tests, put it in the comments down below, tell me what you think, tell me your results, uh, tell me if you think this is a, it's, it's super awesome, like, oh my God, this is great, and now I'm doing something really cool that I wasn't doing before, or is it a complete and total waste of time, and you can get the same thing by clicking the red filter button in Lightroom or Photoshop, so that's that. Speaking of learning things and, and enjoying things and figuring out that, you know what, this is actually really cool, I have an ask for you guys who are watching the show today. I have an ask. I have an ask that you help support the show. There's four different ways that you can support. If you go to photojoseph.com support, you'll see buttons to all of these. The idea here is value for value. Did you learn something from today's show? Have you taken value away from today's show? And can you put a monetary figure on that value? If so, then head over to Patreon or send via PayPal, Apple Pay, Venmo, Google Pay, whatever. Um, send some funds to joseph at photojoseph.com or use an affiliate link to buy something. Or you can even hire me as a private consultant to help you out with whatever is vexing you if you're trying to figure out how to build your live studio, you're trying to figure out how to migrate from one photography system over to another, I can help you out with that. So those are the four different ways that you can primarily help this show. If you took value from today's show, I ask that you provide value in return. Head over to photojoseph.com support and see what makes sense to you. So that's that. The contest is gonna be a lot of fun. Shooting video in black and white with these color filters could be crazy cool. That's a whole different thing to have fun with. Lots of different ways to go about this, but Put those photos together. Again, side by side, an original uh, original black and white conversion without the color filter, and then a black and white conversion with the color filter applied. Do a single image, so you have to go into Photoshop, make a single image that has the two side by side, upload that to the facebook.com slash photojoseph album that we'll create for this contest, and after a couple weeks, we'll do votes via likes, and uh, whoever wins will walk away with this lovely little bag, which I will ship anywhere in the world. Why not? It might take like, two and a half months to get to you if uh, you live on the other side of the world and I ship it by the slow boat, but we'll get it to you. One way or another, we'll get that to you. All right, folks, that's it. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you had fun. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. And we'll see you on Friday for the next show. Bye-bye.